Normal brake fluid. Did you know that it actually has an expiration date? The brake fluid manufacturer suggests that after you open a bottle of DOT3, DOT4, or DOT5 brake fluid, it should be used within three months and discarded after a year. Now we're gonna test this with three different brands of brake fluids that we've had sitting on the shelf around here, just kind of lying around. To test this, we're gonna be using a brake fluid tester from Kawitz. This was sent in to us by Kawitz, so we thank you for sponsoring this video. And please make sure to stick around to the end because I'm gonna give you my personal, professional opinion on if you really need that brake fluid flush that your mechanic keeps hounding you about, or if you're just wasting your money. But first up, we have Walmart Supertech DOT3 brake fluid that's been open for about two months. Second one is AutoZone Shop Pro DOT3 brake fluid that's been open for roughly five months. And last but not least, we have a bottle of Mag1 DOT3 brake fluid that has been open to the best of my knowledge for roughly three years. And now when I say open, I mean they did have the cap on them tightly, they just were not technically sealed because the seal was broken on all of them. For reference, we will be using a bottle of Casey's DOT3 brake fluid that has been unopened and is about two years old at least. So we went in order by oldest to newest from when they were opened, starting with the Mag1. Now the Mag1 was the oldest one by far out of all of them that we had tested, so I figured it would rank pretty bad. It actually tested at a 2.6% water, so while it was close to being bad, it actually passed the test. I honestly thought that this one would have tested way worse. Now the second oldest one, and actually the one that was the clearest in color, Shot Pro, scored a 2.4, so again, pretty close, but still good. From the color of it, I honestly thought it would have scored better. And finally, the newest of our participants, the Supertech, that actually scored a 2.5, which actually really surprised me, because this fluid is only about two months old. But the craziest result that I got out of all of them was actually from the unopened Casey's brand brake fluid. That was the only brake fluid that was able to make the tool read above 3%. And honestly, this made me a little bit curious, so I had to go out and buy a brand new bottle of DOT3 brake fluid just to test it and make sure that, you know, this thing was actually working properly. So I ended up going to Dow General, and I actually picked up some of the Super S DOT3 brake fluid. Now this says that it was actually manufactured or bottled on 6-26-24. Let's see if we can read that. So now, in theory, there should be no way that this bottle has anything over 2% water content, I would imagine. And now the way that the tool actually works is this will read between 0 and 3% of water content in your brake fluid. If it gets above 3, that's when it's considered that it's bad and it needs to be changed. Well, actually, it says right on here, green, which is 0 to 2% water, brake fluid is okay. Yellow means it has 2 to 3% water and consider fluid change, which uh, the light never changed to yellow. I don't understand that. And then red is anything greater than 3% change fluid immediately. I just, I can't wait any longer. I'll just show you that, you know, this is sealed. Okay, so sorry, I do have to do this upside down. 2.5, that's straight out of the, uh, out of the bottle. So I don't know if, I don't know what's going on. So I guess what we're going to do is we're going to actually go and check the vehicles outside and see if we get any different of a reading. But this fluid straight out of, I mean, it's only what, five, six months old, straight out of the bottle, the bottle was completely sealed, is reading a 2.5. So my 94 Buick Roadmaster tested at 2.5%. Eh. Huh. See, now I would have thought this stuff would have been way worse. I guess I did flush this a couple years ago. My 2006 Chevy Colorado, however, tested at 1.9%, which was the lowest of all the fluids. Huh. Here's my 2006 Ford Taurus that has the oldest fluid of any of my vehicles which bottomed out at 2.2%, which surprised me. Note the color because this will be important for later. So I had to stop and think about this for a minute. We have all these different types of situations of brake fluid, and they're all coming up roughly around the same. And even a brand new bottle of brake fluid that actually tested higher than my work truck. I guess it boils down to this. Is this tester accurate or was that brake fluid just bad? Well, my guess is the Dollar General brand actually had water in it coming straight out of their factory, coming straight off of the store. And I think that the tester works. And the other bottles from the tests 
have absorbed moisture from the air. The main thing kind of drawing my conclusion to that is I actually flushed the brake system in my truck about uh, seven or eight months ago and I used good fluid so that makes sense. So all in all my conclusion on if brake fluid has a shelf life, yep, I guarantee you it does. The second you break the seal on that brake fluid, you might as well use all of it and discard the rest because it's hygroscopic and it's just rapidly absorbing moisture from the air. But we haven't talked about why it's bad for water to get in your fluid. And this kind of segues us into my answer on if I think you should get that brake fluid flush or not. Now the reason why moisture in your brake fluid is so bad is it actually reduces its boiling point. There is a such thing as a wet boiling point and a dry boiling point. Dry boiling point is the fluid that does not have any moisture in it and its boiling point is considerably higher. And as we know, the way brakes work, they work on friction. And friction creates a lot of heat which can actually reach temperatures near or actually even exceeding the boiling point of the fluid. And this can be especially true if you've ever had any type of brake problems, be it, you know, low brake pads, squeaking brakes, grinding brakes, all of that creates a lot more heat and a lot more friction which will it will make your brake fluid boil brake fluid being fluid is not compressible well it is compressible it's just it takes an extreme amount of force to compress it but when it boils it turns from a liquid into a gas and gas is highly compressible so it's kind of like the liquid is more solid than gas although liquid cannot be a solid but liquid is definitely more solid than gas. Does that make sense? Another thing moisture content in brake fluid can do is promote corrosion within the braking system, especially the intricate internals of the ABS unit. Now, the color of brake fluid is usually a go-to and a telltale sign of if you need new brake fluid or not. It usually turns almost dark brown to kind of black, and reasons for this are usually dirt, debris, along with moisture and extreme heat, which will actually degrade and break down the molecular structure of the fluid over time. But why does fluid also get darker as it sits? Well, I think that that has to do with oxidization too. I'm not really sure. Let me know what you think about all this down below. But now, probably the reason why you have stayed here this long if you've stayed here is I'm going to give you my personal, professional opinion on if you actually need to flush your brake fluid or not. And I really, really hate it when people say yes and no. What they should say is it depends. And in this case, it's one of those things. It depends. I can tell you absolutely yes if you use your brakes a lot, if you have ever had squeaking, squealing, bad brakes, you know, you could have gotten them changed, but that means that there was an extended period of time where, you know, you were overheating your brake fluid essentially. And that along with, you know, the age of the fluid, it breaking down, it oxidizing, all of that can really decrease your power of the braking system. Now, how much does it actually affect your braking system? <clears throat> I'm not saying that it's something that, you know, the shops are just trying to sell you. And there are certain instances when you do need to change it. So now, honestly, I think it's something that if you have a lot of miles on your car, if you live in mountainous areas, stuff like that, I would worry about, but honestly, I would much rather see you change your oil. That is a whole nother topic for another day. And uh, I'm really thinking about doing a video on that. Let me know also if you think that that would be something that you would be interested in. But for now, if you wanna see anything else related to automotive repair or stuff like that, there's gonna be a playlist up there somewhere. And if you're into car audio and awesome stuff like that, there's gonna be a playlist up over there too. Or they might be switched, I don't know. But anyways, thank you guys.